Saxon Algebra 1 half, Lesson 116. Last time we talked about polygons, it was boring, but now we're gonna do something a little more interesting. We're gonna find the area of polygons. Okay, um, you already know how to do this. For a rectangle, you know that the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width, right? Length is usually the longer side, width is the shorter side, but it doesn't really matter. You just measure one side against the other side and that will give you the formula. You also know for a triangle, it's base times the height divided by two. And height is measured by the spider that climbs to the top and drops a web line straight down. My spiders always have six legs. I'm really sorry, that's all I can do. Okay, and then with circles, the area of a circle with a radius is pi r squared. Okay, so these are all area formulas that you know. Now, here's the good news. When we do parallelograms and trapezoids, which are the two we're gonna talk about today, we don't, need to, we don't need any new formulas. We can work with what we've got. So let's start with a parallelogram. And I'm gonna draw it. Parallelogram is like a squished rectangle. It has two pairs of matching sides. Four, six, six, and then John does this for us. Three. three should be written. Three is the length of this side. I wrote it kind of sideways. It looks like it's down there. But three is the length of this. Okay, so how can we take this information and make something useful out of it? Here's what I like to do. We're going to divide this with a diagonal into two triangles. This is going to be triangle one, and this is going to be triangle two. The A stands for area. So what I'm gonna do is write this a bunch of times. I'm going to calculate the area of this triangle down here. I'm gonna calculate the area of this triangle down here. Then I'm gonna add them together and that will give me the whole thing, okay? Now, so I'm gonna turn my attention to the first triangle that I drew. It doesn't matter which one I label A1 or A2. I'm gonna add them together in the end, so it's fine. But I have to think of this as a triangle with a base and a height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of, using the words we learned last time, I'm gonna reflect it in my mind's eye up. That makes it a little bit easier for me to see that the base is six, and the height, this is what tells me the height, right? is three, and I'm gonna divide it by two. Does that make sense? This is the base, if I reflect it up. The height, it would be kind of like this, wouldn't it? Right, and this would be the base of six. This would be four. We don't know that measurement, but we don't really need it. But this, where the spider would go, is just three. Four is the tippy side three is the straight edge that we want, okay? So that's how I mentally did that, I reflected it up. So this equals, let's see, I'm gonna cancel those two and get a three, this equals nine. So a, the area of the first triangle we created is nine. This one's a little bit easier because we don't have to mentally flip it up, we can see it right here. The base is six, and look, the height of this one is also three. That will make sense in a parallelogram the two triangles will always be the same because parallelograms have matching pairs of sides. So that's nine, so our total is 18. Our units are inches, and because it's area, we end up with a square. So 18 inches squared is the answer to that problem. Make sense? We don't have a new formula, we just create two triangles and use the triangle formula. Oh, I love it when it's easy. I mean, that was kind of hard. It was hard in that we had to visually flip that top triangle around a little bit, but otherwise, we're good. All right. 
example, 116.2. Two equal sides. Okay, this one's weird. This is the kind of thing you'd be doing in your homework and be like, what? What are they even talking about? Instead of giving us numbers, they just say that the length of that side is B units long. And then they give us this thing again, which we right, 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 right away recognize as, oh, this is where the spider is dropping his web. That's why John gives us this. And this he's just calling H. There's no numbers. He just wants us to um, find the area of this. It says two equal sides in this parallelogram are B units long. Okay, we got that. The two other equal sides are not labeled. Ugh, annoying. But we know right off the bat, we don't need the lengths of those sides. This is what we need. Um... Divide this parallelogram into two triangles and find the formula for the area of a triangle. Okay, so what he's asking us to do is using B for base and H for height, calculate it using just the way we did last time and see if that gives us a formula. It does. Just wait and we'll see. Um, what I'm gonna do just to show you that it will work easily either way is I'm gonna divide by this diagonal last time this time. Last time we kind of went like that, but what I want to show you is that it doesn't matter. You can do it either way and it'll be fine. So you can't screw up the way you divide it. Here's A1, here's A2, and then here's where I'll add them in the end. All right. I like to set this out in the beginning because it reminds me of what exactly I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find the areas of both triangles and add them together and I'm gonna need a little space. All right, so A1. I like this one because the first triangle is on its base, so it feels, I don't have to do that visual spinning. All right, base times height divided by two is our formula, right? Base times height divided by two. And look, when I fill in the base and the height, well, they're just B and H. So this is, this was, this was my formula but when I fill in the letters, it's the very same, right? So this is base times height divided by two. And when I go to look at this one, okay, I'm gonna have to visually rotate it. No, reflect it, sorry. I wanna flop it up so that this is the base. It looks easier for me. It's still gonna be base times height divided by two, right? Because the base is B and the height is H. So when I go to add these, okay, the denominators match, so I can add them. And I'm gonna get 2BH over two, or I can cancel that. The, the total is just BH. So if I wanted to memorize a formula for the area of a parallelogram, I could just use this. It's the base times the height. Let's go back and look at our old pro problem and see if that works. The base was six, the height, not the length of this side, but the proper height is three. Six times three is 18, it works, okay? That's cool. If you wanna memorize that, it would look like this. We would draw a parallelogram and we would write base times height and we would remember that height represents the spider, not the length of the side. You can memorize that if you want, or you can be like me and say, I'm not gonna memorize it, I'm just gonna do the triangle thing. Either way. Um, two more. Draw, find the area of this trapezoid. Okay, this is a trapezoid, which means two sides are parallel, but otherwise it's kooky. Okay, so nothing's at right angles in the shape. We find out that this is six, this is nine, this is seven, but if you draw the corner, this is four. And we know right away, okay, this is where the spider is sitting, right? Okay, so it's a quadrilateral. Quadrilaterals 
are not gonna fit this definition. This is a parallelogram and all these sides are equal. Let me just put that in there. Those two sides are equal and these two sides are equal. This one, nobody's equal. The top and the bottom are parallel, but nobody's equal. So I'm just gonna do my triangle trick. Oh, pretend it's perfect. I'll do it over here, A1 plus A2. Okay, so now I've got all of my work laid out for me and I go back and look at my triangles. Okay, A1 is the first triangle. This is the number I wanna use for the base, so I'm gonna visually reflect that up. And I'm gonna get the base is six and the height is four divided by two this equals 12. Make sense? This one, now remember this is a trapezoid so our numbers are not gonna be the same. This base is nine. The seven, no, that's not helpful to me. I need the spider's distance, that's four. So it's nine times four divided by two. Two, this equals 18. So when I add them together, what are our units? Feet, I'm just look in the problem and it's squared because it's area. So with a parallelogram, the two triangles will always be equal. With a trapezoid, the two triangles will not be equal. And so it's a little more random. Okay. But, oh, 116.4, the last one. John is gonna have us come up with a formula for a trapezoid. I think he's obsessed with formulas when he doesn't need to be, but we'll play along. Okay, here's our shape, ready? This he says is B1, this is B2. Notice they're subscripts, they're at the bottom, not up at the top as exponents. And this is I didn't draw that very well, but that's the height and we're calling it H. Okay, so he wants us to use the letters and come up with a formula. I don't really want to, but I'm gonna do it because you know what, I'm a team player. A1, A2. So here we go, A1, A2, and I'm feeling crazy, so we're gonna do the summary down here. We're gonna use up the whole page on this problem. All right. A1, the base is B2, the height is H, and we divide it by two because that's the formula for a triangle. To find A2, okay, we reflect it up, the base is now B1 times H divided by two. All right, so far so good. And now we'll write our things down here. It's B2H over two and B1H over two, which can't be simplified very well. Let me write it like this. It can be simplified, but it's a little bit confusing to see in that presentation, so let me rewrite it. When I look at these two terms, okay, that's, that's our total. When I look at these two terms, I see that they have two things in common. They each have an H and they each have a two in the denominator. So I'm gonna factor out H over two. That takes care of those two. And then what's left is, I'm gonna reverse the order, B1 plus B2. So the area of a trapezoid has a formula that looks like that. I personally don't wanna memorize it. I'm gonna use my triangle strategy every single time and I'm gonna get the right answer. But the purpose of this lesson that I would have you take away is that if we want formulas for parallelograms and quadru quadrilaterals, sorry, my brain went dead, trapezoids, that's what I was trying to think of. Um, if we want a formula for a parallelogram or a trapezoid, we can make it but honestly, they're more trouble than they're worth. So I'm not gonna talk about those monsters ever again. End of lesson 116, bye.